I'm Maria Menunos, and you're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz begin. Hey guys, welcome back to Dish Upon a Star, where we talk to some of your favorite stars from your favorite movies and TV shows. I'm your host, Shay Jones, and today's guest is Miss Trinity Soaks. You might know her as Judy in Case in the Cover. You might have read her book, In Vote and Blessed, and she always keeps it amazing. How are you feeling today? I am doing well. How are you? I'm super excited to be here. Like, even though I'm in my house, like, I still get to talk to you. So. Same. Like, I'm super happy that we get to do this. Now, first, the first question is, how are you dealing with this new quarantine lifestyle that we're in right now? Well, it's definitely been an adjustment. This is, I believe, my third week of quarantining, being stuck at home. But it's definitely an adjustment being that I'm a socialite and I like going to hang out with my friends and going to set and going to the beach and things like that. But I've been adjusting pretty well, definitely been using FaceTime a lot more than usual. <laughs> um, but I've been able to kind of get ahead on my schoolwork and, you know, do some coloring, some painting and just be a little bit more artistic as well. Oh, that's awesome. So there's so many things I want to get into. I can't, like, I'm trying to figure out where to start. But we're going to start <laughs> off with what was it about performing that made you want to do it as a career? I think what about performing that made me want to do it as a career was how it made other people feel, not necessarily how it made me feel, even though it made me feel amazing and awesome, something that I could never recreate in any other field, I guess. But just being able to make other people laugh or even make them cry or be able to make them feel whatever I'm feeling or whatever the character's feeling in that moment. It's just something that is so captivating. It's something that I was able to just fully immerse myself. Hello. Oh, cool. Sorry, it froze for a second. <laughs> so who are some people in the industry that uh, you were inspired by growing up? Um, I know when I was younger, and even now still, I'm super inspired by Raven Simone, just how she's able to kind of just be herself in any field and just live her life unapologetically, but also Miss Angela Bassett, she's phenomenal in every single area, also how she's able to kind of take care of herself and how she's able to portray so many different iconic characters in such a great way. Definitely, I mean, we were definitely going to touch on Miss Angela Bassett because... We, we, we'll get to that a little later. If you have not read her book, you will find out why later. <laughs> but we're going to uh, talk about Casey Undercover. Do you remember your audition for Judy? Yes, I do remember my audition for Judy. I remember I walked in. I was super nervous because when I read the script, I was like, this is it. I could feel that this was going to be my moment. This was going to be my big break. So I was really praying and I was like, Lord, please don't let me mess this up. But um, when I walked in the audition room, I just I just let it all go when I was able to do what I had to do. And thankfully, it worked out. What was your favorite thing about playing Judy? My favorite thing about playing Judy was how I was able to do so many things in the run of one show. I was able to sort of travel in a sense because we did episodes that took place in Rio and things like that. So I was able to travel in a sense in one show. I was able to do stunts in a sense in one show. And I was also able to just kind of get new things under my belt, um, being that it was my very first show. So I was able to learn how to work with different writers and producers. And I was also able to learn how to even do voiceover and ADR and looping and things like that. So it was a great all around show for me. What was your favorite memory from set? Um, my favorite memory from set, I have two. Um, the first one definitely has to be the real episode, the real episode slash the circuit, the circus episode, because I've always wanted to be in a circus. I don't know why. Um, I've, <laughs> been in a circus. I've always wanted to be in a circus and I've always loved Rio, um, Carnival, the outfits and the fashion. Um, but then the other favorite memory of mine has to be our very last day on set. It was amazing because a lot of our previous guest stars came and visit us and our old writers and things like that. They all came back and it was just a really great day to just see how everything all came around. Speaking of the finale, it was very emotional. Like I, I feel like just not for you guys as well, but for the fans who are watching because 
you know, we, we spent three seasons with Casey and the Coopers and Judy, and it was amazing. But where do you think Judy is now? Like since the show ended, what is Judy still with the Coopers? What do you think she's up to? So now she's probably in high school. I believe so she's probably either a freshman or a sophomore junior in high school so I do think that she's still probably with the Coopers being that she learned so many new things about being a human per se I don't think leaving them would be some easy feat for her to do but I definitely think that she's still trying to figure out how to be as normal as possible but then also kicking butt on the weekends I fully support that (laughs) <laughs> as well is was there a prop that you guys used a lot on set that you wish you could have maybe taken with you um yes actually I ended up taking it home on the very last day so I was super excited about that it was one of I think it was it was the painting at the top of the Cooper stairs it was super iconic to me because we will always either end an episode with that painting up there or begin an episode with it so I was very excited to kind of have that painting in my home Oh, that's awesome. Now, the same time Casey Undercover was ending, you decided to add a, like, check another box on everything that Trinity could be doing. You became an author, yes. and you came out with Bold and Blessed. Yes. And it is, like, you giving advice to young girls, answering questions for your fans, talking about your faith. And it is also, the intro after the contents is a foreword by Miss Angela Bassett herself. Yes. How did that feel knowing she was going to write that? That was just so amazing to me. It it was just mind boggling. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Especially being that Bold and Blessed was my very first book. It's just amazing that someone that I aspire to be like and someone that inspires me so much was able to kind of put their stamp on a project that was so meaningful to me. So it's great to kind of just have her words along with mine. And for those who haven't had a chance to check out Bold and Blush just yet, uh, what do you want them to know just about it? I want them to know that Bold and Blessed is, it's a very fun, easy to read book, but it's really about loving yourself and knowing your self-worth and being able to accept yourself no matter who you are, what you might look like or where you may be from. Just being able to love yourself regardless, but it also kind of shows how I was able to do that as well and kind of overcome some obstacles that I've had in my life. But something else that's super cool with Bold and Blessed is that I have fan questions in there. So when I was writing Bold and Blessed, I asked my fans some questions that I actually put in the book and answered. So that was super cool. And I also have my favorite thing and other fun facts about me as well that you might not know um like I I just think it's incredible I think because you released it before you turned 13 so so, I think that makes you almost the youngest to come out with a book yes so when I released Bold and Blessed I was 12 it was December yeah so I was 12 and I was actually the youngest author to sign with my publishing company which was HarperCollins and HarperCollins makes it incredible. They also work with Tia and Tamara that I know. And that is so incredible. Are you working on a new book or do you have any new ideas for a new book that you're excited about that you maybe can share? Because I know you have to keep things under wraps. Yes, um, definitely. I've been brainstorming during quarantine some new ideas for some new projects and definitely some books as well. Maybe even some murder mystery and also some projects I'm working on with my mom. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. And you have, you've been recurring on a new show, yes. Coop and Cammie, yes. on Disney Channel as Nev. And she is, I feel, Judy Cooper grown up in the, <laughs> in the, in the, but like even just more like precise in her, like, sh- like the shade she throws, but she's just authentically this person. I think that's, I think the um, amazing thing I love about your character, she's so authentic. Yes, I totally agree. Nev was definitely and still is a blast for me to play because she's so different from any character that I've played so far in my career because she's so grounded. She knows exactly what she wants, no matter how rude it might come across or how blunt it might come across. (laughs) She knows what she wants and she goes after and she's definitely a go-getter. Now, one of my favorite episodes because because she is so blunt, like it's so weird to see that type of character love a fan uh, fan fiction quote unquote of the case of Goron and 
what was it like being in the, the outfit dressing up cosplaying oh my gosh that was it was so crazy first off the outfit was extremely hot it was so hot so I was like oh my gosh I feel so bad for the people like on Game of Thrones they do this every day um I just have this for one scene and I'm over here freaking out but it was super hot, even though, I feel like it was hot, but it was worth it. I mean, it made the episode so awesome and I loved it. I got some great cool pictures out of it, but it was cool to just kind of transport myself to the medieval Renaissance time, being that's one of my favorite periods of history. Do you have a favorite book from that time? That time like that time in history, I should say? Well, not necessarily. I don't have a favorite book from like the Renaissance medieval time, but I have found myself reading way more Shakespeare than I expected um, because I'm reading it a lot for school, but I like Shakespeare. I don't think that was necessarily his time, but I like Shakespeare. A little bit more back, but yeah, like definitely Shakespeare is still timeless. Yeah. And still relevant. Very. So it takes a little bit longer to learn what the words mean but once you figure it out you're like I'm good right I definitely think that I think that's what's so enticing about Shakespeare is that he's such and his work is such a puzzle so when you read it it's like a whole puzzle solving mystery and I can read it and you can read it and we'll get two totally different meanings from it but we'll all get the same theme of what that work of Shakespeare means definitely and speaking of you know two different things in a way, people getting different views is mixed dish. Yeah. Because you're also mixed dish as Miss Chamika. Yes. And how is it for you doing an 80s piece? Because this is your first period piece yourself. Yes, it was my first period piece. And I must say, it was definitely a whole nother ball game for me. Um, definitely because it was my first primetime show. So that was super cool as well. But I got to learn fun things like the Walkman and <laughs> the scrunchy socks and, you know, the weird fanny packs and the color coding and things like that. So I was able to learn so many fun things and also some of the origins of some of our favorite fashions now. What was the weirdest 80s either prop you had to use or something you're just like, you had to, what is this? I feel like the hardest prop, I guess, for me to grasp was the Walkman. Like, it was so big, it was so <laughs> clunky, and then, like, the buttons and the, the, the cassette tape and the string, and it was so complicated and so complex, being that now I just go on my phone and I pick a song and I download it, and then that's that. You know, I don't have to carry around a big metal machine that could be used as a brick. <laughs> I mean, that is very true. The Walkmans were very clunky in their time. Granted, I never had to personally use one, but they were, they're like now antiques. Yeah. In that sense. They're very vintage. Yeah, very vintage. Miss- but I mean, they're cool. I will say though, working with it for a couple scenes, it's pretty cool. I think it's definitely something that's, you know, timeless and that can be used in any era, you know, whether for fun or for actual use. So how has it been on set learning about a totally different time and working with, you know, um, with, with Arika and then you have, you, I love your character meeting um, the Aunt Denise, like that moment of you two meeting was super iconic to me as a, like, as a viewer watching it because it's, it's like seeing your past thing, your future self all at the same time. I totally agree. Um, Working on Mixed Dish has definitely been a blast for me because I've been able to grab so many new experiences out of working on the show. And I've also been able to grab some new friends as well. But me meeting Aunt Denise was so iconic in so many different ways. I totally agree that they have so many different similarities that having them come together, meeting in one scene was just so fabulous. It couldn't have been written any better way for me. It was amazing. And also the thing about Tamika is she's herself. Like it's like, it's still, she's still authentic. She is, she knows who she is and where she fits in and at least the world for the eighties time in her mind. And it's interesting seeing her and Bo be friends yeah. because it's so new to her. Right. It's so, so different. Tamika is a totally different type of personality that 
um, Bo is like had in her life before because she's so straightforward and so blunt. But even though that's the way that she is, she wants the best for Rainbow. She wants her to succeed and she wants her to kind of get with the times, fit in a little bit with what's happening. But I feel like that's sort of been like a bit of a trend with all of my characters so far is that they might be blunt, they might be straightforward, they definitely might be a little bit harsh, but at the end of the day, they still want everybody to succeed and do the best that they can. Definitely. And Mixus has so many great themes that are still so relevant to today. One of my, two of my favorite episodes, I will say, was definitely the Black hair culture conversation. Mm -hmm. Because it is a conversation of what, like, what makes Black hair and then what makes me beautiful because of what my hair is supposed to look like at the time. Right. I think that's something that's still currently being talked about in the same abundance as it um, was back then because I think loving your hair is so important because that's such a big thing about women and especially black women as well because our hair is great our hair is cool but we have to learn how to love it no matter what style or what texture it might be so I love that episode because it was able to portray that in a serious yet comedic way as well and definitely the stereotyping episode which yeah. where we you know on Denise and Tamika meet but also you know, the stereotypes of, you know, the angry Black woman or um, only Black people can be fast at track or we can't swim and those conversations and also the under message of if you know who you are and yeah. if you love what you're doing, no stereotype will matter because you're being you. Right. I think the stereotype episode was another message that was so prevalent, especially now in the 21st century, because a lot of people might be basing their decisions on stereotypes or what might they what are they supposed to do because of how they look or how they sound or where they're from. But I think that that episode, you know, because of the track and the swimming, it really shows that like whatever you put your heart in and whatever you want to do, you can do it no matter how you look. If you want to do it, you can. And I think that you should do it no matter what your culture or what others might say. What I love about you, Trinity, is you've always been an advocate for standing up for um, people who have been bullied or just being true to who you are. For those who are watching right now who are either still struggling with trying to figure out who they are, what would be your advice to them? My advice to you would be to love yourself no matter how you look, no matter anything about you, you are perfect just the way that you are. And you don't have to change yourself to fit in with anybody or because someone else might tell you to, because just remember, if somebody is in your couch, or if they're in your group, your friend group or your family or something like that, and they don't love you for who you are, then they're not supposed to be with you. They're not supposed to be friends or anything like that with you because you have to love yourself at any stage of you. Oh, totally. Love that and totally agree as well. There, uh, I want to say something about your character real quick from Kubi Kim because the new episode aired and Nev took a break. I want to say broke up. We took a break. She took a break from Fred. Yeah. Now, will we be seeing Nev again just for fans who would like to know that? Well, if you can tell us that you don't get in trouble about. <laughs> I do think that Nev might be coming back. I'm not sure whether, what capacity she'll be back. I'm not sure if she'll be back with Fred or anything like that. But I do believe that she is coming back. So it's a cliffhanger for me and the fans as well. What I loved about that episode, it was very interesting, was because your character, it wasn't so much the fact that this is like the second or third time he would lie to you. You're just like, right. I'm not even mad. I'm, I mean, I'm mad, but I'm more hurt that, it's been something you've continued to do. And if you continue to have to lie to me to think that we, and that's the way a relationship works, I can't do it. Right. It, I, feel, I think that episode really encompassed the fact that you have to value yourself. So I think the reason that Nev sort of broke it off with Fred was because she valued herself and her time and what she sort of brought to that relationship so much that she said, if you can't really trust me and if you can't find it in yourself to be honest with me, then I value myself enough not to waste your time, especially not to waste mine. Definitely. And I think that's a, definitely a great message for every young girl who's ever been in that type of situation. It's okay to leave. Yeah. It's okay not to stay. It's so okay to leave. Like, do, like, like, love yourself. Like, I think that's the, I think one of the bigger messages I love is like, if you love, if you, when you love yourself, you will know what you will not accept. 
Right. I feel like the biggest message, especially that can kind of come out of Fred and Nev's relationship is self-value. Because, like I said, because she values herself so much and she thinks so highly of herself, she's able to see her worth and what she brings to the relationship. And if you can't value me as someone that I'm giving my time and energy to, then you're not worthy of myself. You're not worthy of anything that I can do for you. And you do have a new episode of Mixed Dish coming up this week. Can you tell us a little bit about it? For- I cannot. You cannot? Oh, no. Okay. No, you guys have to stay on your toes. Again, it's going to be another good episode. All of our episodes are good, but it's going to be another great episode. But no, 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 no. Lips closed. Can't, no, no spoilers. Okay, so we won't do spoilers. How about, let's say season two of Mixed Dish. Where would Tamika, like, where would you see want to see Tamika in, in season two of Mixed Dish and see her growth? I guess I would like to see Tamika definitely continue her friendship with Rainbow and maybe even, you know, lighten up a little bit, maybe be a little bit, a little bit more positive. But I would also love to see her relationship with Aunt Denise grow um, to possibly even a new friendship and maybe even a new uh, mentorship for Tamika. All right, I can definitely see that because they both have, I feel like, the same views and values on certain situations. Yeah, and they definitely have a similar way of approaching situations as well. <laughs> that is very true. So you've all, you've been known for wearing your own fashion designs on red carpets. Are you working on any new collections your fans can get excited about? Yes, I am. So I've been brainstorming all types of ideas during quarantine. So I'm getting back in my sketchbook and coming up with some new designs. So definitely stay on the lookout for that. And for this quarantine, you've been doing lives. Yes. With very special guests. Yes. You had J.D. McCrary, who played Young Simba. You had Gabrielle from All That. And then you do a Sunday version, too, with more viable verse trivia. Yes. So the, the trivia during quarantine has been amazing. Like you mentioned, we've had some amazing guests, and it's been so much fun. But Monday through Friday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we get on live, we have a special guest, and we just have some fun. Um, we all learn new things about fun questions about any topic, really, about health, music, fashion, pop culture. But you're correct, on Sundays at 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we have Bible trivia. So definitely get your, your Bible brain working. You know, I was because I was watching a little bit earlier. I was just like, like, what is his name? I was like, I'm learning as like, it's happening. I think that's such a great and very inspirational thing to do at this time because most of us are in our houses and we're kind of living by life to either work out or to connect with other people and see what other people are, are, you know, managing this time as well. So I think that's a great idea that you've been doing. Yeah, so I definitely think that quarantine have been pushing people to find new ways to connect with people, older new friends, and finding new ways to kind of be social in an anti-social time right now. So live has definitely been a way for me to kind of meet up with some friends of mine and kind of have give us all something to do during quarantine. Is there any shows you're binging right now that you're super excited about? Yes, so all of my friends have been telling me about it, and now I'm finally going to have time to watch it. So I'm binge, watch, I'm binge watching Greenhouse Academy right now, and I know they have a new season coming out, so I'm super excited about that. And I've also started to watch All American. Okay, nice. And we're going to play uh, one of my favorite games. It's called Rabbit Fire, Favorite Things. Uh-oh. So how it works is I'm going to just ask you five favorite thing questions, and I'll just off the top of your head, you know, your, your answer for it. Okay. Who was your favorite Casey undercover guest star? Ooh, okay, okay. Um, I would have to say Leslie Jordan. He's so funny and he came on during the circus episode as like the ringleader. He's just so funny and like his everyday conversation is just hilarious. Had to be one of my favorite guest stars. Favorite Judy line from Casey undercover? Definitely, definitely has to be don't get all up in my grill again. I just feel like that is so iconic, such a staple that it would be shame on me not to say it. Well, especially after you kind of just flipped her. Hey. <laughs> Your favorite song to sing? Ooh, my favorite song to sing probably has to be Love on Top by Beyonce. I feel like that's 
no matter what genre I might be listening to right now, that's like a great song to kind of warm up to. It's also my shower song. <laughs> nice. The fa your favorite red carpet you attended? Ooh, my favorite red carpet that I've attended. Oh my gosh. I've been on so many, it's not even working right now. I would have to say most recently, the Spies in Disguise premiere. I thought that was one of my favorites because I actually did interviews for the red carpet. So that was cool for me to be on the other side of the mic to kind of test out my interviewing and hosting skills. So that probably has to be my favorite right now. Definitely. And your favorite fan moment you experienced? My favorite fan moment I've experienced probably had to been when I was out with my family. We were at Universal Studios and we were just walking and this kid came up to me. He was like, oh my gosh, I love you so much. And I was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Thank you for watching. And then he proceeded to faint on the concrete. So I got very scared, but thankfully he was okay. But that has to be one of my favorite fan moments because that was just hilarious. You can you cannot write something better than that. That was I know. <laughs> well, speaking of you know interviewing and being on the other side, how was that for you doing the interviews and you know talking to people like Will Smith on the carpet and experiencing what it's like for us as interviewers? <laughs> yeah, um, I thought it was hard being on this side. It's way harder being the interviewer, but I loved it being able to interview people like Will Smith and reconnecting with Tom. It was great because I love Will Smith. I He's just so funny and he's so such a great actor and iconic because he's been able to play so many different roles. But being able to interview the cast and the producers was amazing because I've never done interviews for a carpet before. So being able to do that was great. And it's also even better that everybody will be able to see those interviews because they're going to be on the extras for the DVD and Blu-ray for Spies in Disguise. Oh no, that's awesome. Oh yeah. Now, is there anything on your acting bucket list that you want to check off, like Marvel, DC? Definitely Marvel. I definitely want to be a superhero for sure. Definitely want to work with, you know, if he comes back out of retirement, uh, Captain America, if I can get him to come back, you know, Chris Evans, would love to work with you and definitely Scarlett Johansson and Black Widow. So great. And Black Panther, come on. I mean, we do got time for Black Panther too. So you who know who knows what might happen. I know, I know. Who knows? Listen, 2022, I'm so excited. Is there like anything else you're just super excited about that you want fans to know? Like any new projects that they can be excited about? I just want you guys to stay tuned to all of my social media and my YouTube as well because I'm starting a new YouTube show called Poppin' with Trinity. So I'm going to be talking about lots of fun topics, all things teen, you know, fashion, current events and politics and things like that. So definitely something to look out for. And do you have any advice for your younger fans who want to uh, get in the business, who want to be a uh, in, who wants to be an actor or a writer or a fashion designer, but they don't really know where to start? My advice would be to definitely tell someone that you trust so that way you can have someone else to bounce ideas off of and also just research. I feel like the biggest thing for me and my family was that we went and we researched and we acted on it. So with fashion, we found a fashion camp and I went and that's where I made my first two designs. Um, and with acting, you know, we just let it all go the way that the Lord had for us. And we found an agent and a manager. So I just think the biggest thing is to research, make sure that it's something that you want to do and just go after it. Well, that's amazing. You want to tell the fans where they can find you on all social media platforms. Yes. So on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, and YouTube, <laughs> all Trinity Stokes, T-R-I-N-I-T-E-E-S-T-O-K-E-S. And you guys can find me at Real Shay Jones on Twitter and Instagram. You can also find Dish Upon a Star Instagram account at Dish Upon a Star underscore. Thank you so much for doing this with me. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you guys. This is so much fun. And you guys have a wonderful day. Just stay home. Stay safe, guys. Our founder, Kevin Undergaro, and me, Maria Menunos, would like to thank you for tuning in to AfterBuzz TV. Remember, we're not just the first, we're the biggest in the world, and we're the only destination for all your favorite TV shows. Whatever you crave, we've got it. So go to AfterBuzzTV.com and check out our lineup. Buzz you later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.